Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Sunday, May 26, 2024. And if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Sunday, Major League Baseball. First up, the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the Detroit Tigers. Yusei Kikuchi and Casey Mize are your starters. You know, the, the Blue Jays are 0-5 in Kikuchi's last five starts, so it's obviously a little bit of a concern going into this game, but he's pitched well himself. I mean, in the month of May, 24 and a third innings, 25 strikeouts, a 2.22 ERA, only the two home runs given up. The control's been fine. The last game had three walks, but other than that, he's been pitching really well. And now you're facing a Detroit Tigers team that in the month of May, some of the worst numbers in baseball against left-handed pitching in terms of OPS, isolated power. So this is a pretty good matchup for you, Kikuchi. I think he pitches well. Another quality start here. You know, Casey Mize, it's been a tough season for him, 4.57 ERA. He has been a lot better at Comerica Park. So right off the bat, I'm leaning towards the under. But I do think the Blue Jays can find a few runs off. And we saw that last game for Mize against the Royals. Six earned runs, giving up nine base hits. Now, the Royals have just been you know, crushing the baseball at Kauffman Stadium this year. So no real surprise to see another starter struggle in that one. But you know, Mize has still given up at least one home run in each of his last four starts. And the Tigers are also 0-4 in his last four starts. So... I'm going to go with the Toronto Blue Jays on the money line and the under in this one. Next up, we see the Atlanta Braves taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Chris Sale and Martin Perez are your starters. Now, the Pittsburgh Pirates have actually been pretty solid against lefties this year and in the month of May. In the month of May, they're top 15 in both Team OPS and Isolated Power against lefties top 10 in uh, Isolated Power. So, you know, Chris Sale is a lefty. It's not necessarily a horrible matchup for Pittsburgh, but Sale has just been so dominant this season. It's really tough to go against him. Now, he's pitching on the road where we've seen him have an ERA above four. He's been a lot better at Truist Park, but I still think Sale is just a much better option in this game. Even though the, the uh, Pirates have the better offensive numbers against lefties this month, I don't love what I'm seeing from Martin Perez. At last game, it was only two earned runs, but it was four total runs and a home run against the Giants three walks ago with it. There was a lot of base runners, and he only went four and a third innings in that start. Before that, he gave up nine earned runs and five home runs to the Milwaukee Brewers. Before that one, four earned runs and eight base hits. So he is just getting crushed right now. And even if the Braves don't do a ton of damage early on, they should be able to get some runs against that Pirates bullpen late in the game. So give me the Atlanta Braves here, laying the one and a half runs on the run line on the road. Next up, the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Boston Red Sox. No official starter for Milwaukee, but we should see Tanner Houck going for Boston. You know, right now I'm leaning towards the Red Sox. We'll see who the official starter is for Milwaukee. But Tanner Houck's pitched really well this year. And even at Fenway Park, you know, very hitter-friendly ballpark, he's still got a 2.38 ERA there through uh, 30 innings, 34 innings of work. So he, the, the key for me is Tanner Houck's been able to keep the ball in the yard. Only one home run given up. This entire season, 65 innings of work, only one home run. That's really impressive. When you're a Red Sox, Red Sox pitcher and you have to pitch a lot of games at Fenway Park, if you're able to keep the ball in the yard, you usually put yourself in a good position. And, you know, while the, the Red Sox are just two and three in his last five games, he still kept them in ball games. Three on runs or fewer in each of his last five starts. He's gone seven innings, five and two thirds, seven, six, six and two thirds. So usually goes deeper into ball games. I like his chances to grab a W here for the Red Sox. So give me Boston on the money line. Next up, we see the Seattle Mariners taking on the Washington Nationals. Brian Wu for Seattle and Mitchell Parker going for the Nets. Brian Wu has been excellent so far. He was really strong in his minor league starts before getting the call up, you know, back to the major leagues. And he is so far in uh, 15 and two thirds innings, only one earned run given up. So that's a .57 ERA, 15 strikeouts in those 15 and two thirds innings, no home runs and only two walks given up. And he even pitched against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium in that last game. We know the Yankees have absolutely crushed righties in the month of May and pretty much all season. And Wu went six innings of two hit, no earned run baseball, no walks, and seven strikeouts against, against the Bombers in a 6-3 to three Mariners victory. So I, I like Wu in this spot. I mean, the Nationals, they have been they were strong against righties at the beginning of the year. They've kind of tailed off in the month of May. I like Parker. He's pitched well at Nationals Park especially. But in the last few games, giving up some sharp contact base hits and home runs, at least one homer in his last three games. I think the Mariners can get to him for a few runs, and I trust this Mariners bullpen after Wu leaves the game. So give me Seattle in this one on the money line. Even though it's tough to go against the Nationals, they've been a profitable team this year. i got to go with Seattle on the money line. Next up, we see the Kansas City Royals taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Michael Waka and Taj Bradley are your projected starters. 
You know, Taj Bradley's got great uh, strikeout stuff. We saw 10 strikeouts from him in that last game against the Red Sox. He's had 23 strikeouts and 18 innings of work so far this year. But he does give up a lot of sharp contact. When he's giving up hits and you know sharp contact in general, it usually is you know very high exit velocity, hard hit percentage is way up there. And that's why we see him give up three home runs in the last two games combined. And when you look at the Kansas City Royals, one of the reasons why I liked them going into this season was because last year, while it was a disappointing season, their offense actually hit the ball very, very hard. They were near the top of the league in hard hit percentage, exit velocity. And so far this year, that's definitely the case. The Red Sox are very potent, or excuse me, the Royals are a very potent lineup. And I think that they can get to Taj Bradley for some extra base hits and potentially some home runs in this game. Michael Walker, not my favorite option. I think the Rays can get to him for a few runs, a former Ray pitcher there in Michael Walker. I like the over in this one, but I also think the Kansas City Royals will end up with the W. So give me Kansas City in the over. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Dodgers taking on the Cincinnati Reds. We're going to see Yoshinobu Yamamoto and Andrew Abbott as the projected starters. You know, Andrew Abbott's been excellent in the month of May with 24 innings of work and a 1.88 ERA. However, only 16 strikeouts in those 24 innings is a bit of a concern for me because it's not like Andrew Abbott's a ground ball specialist that can get pitch to contact outs. He has a 31 to 44 ground ball to fly ball ratio, well below 50% ground ball rate in that month of May. So against a you know, pretty tough Dodgers lineup, I think he could be in trouble here, even though he's been better at Great American than on the road, which is not, you know, we don't see that too often from red starting pitchers, but with Yamamoto on the other side, it's just tough for me to get there with Cincinnati. I mean, he's pitched so well on the road, 3-0 with a 1.59 ERA. Great strikeout numbers this year. He's in good form. The Dodgers win a majority of his games. They've won all five of his last five starts. So I got to go with the Dodgers in this game and lay the one and a half runs on the run line. Next up, we see the San Francisco Giants taking on the New York Mets. We're going to see Logan Webb and Sean Manaya as your starters. I'm going to take the Giants in this game, but I am a little bit hesitant because I don't love backing Logan Webb on the road. He's got an ERA above five on the road this season. And you know the New York Mets do have one of the higher ground ball rates in baseball. So that is beneficial for a starter like Logan Webb, who keeps the ball on the ground or looks to keep the ball on the ground. But the, the thing is, you know, Logan Webb, even that last game against Pittsburgh, where he went six innings, he went two earned runs, you know, quality start. He had six strikeouts. Looks like a good start on paper. I watched that game. He did get into some trouble in that one, gave some sharp contact, and had less than a 50% ground ball rate by the end of that start, which is also a concern because Pittsburgh has got the second highest or third highest ground ball rate in baseball. So you would expect that to be a pretty much dominant outing for Webb. It just wasn't. He kind of labored through those six innings. He had 103 pitches through the six innings, and usually he's a guy that's a lot more efficient than that, that can go six, seven, uh, eight innings with you know not really too many issues. So I, I do worry about that with Logan Webb. I still think he's the better option in this game, and I think the Giants can get to Sean Manaya. and I also think the Giants, even though their bullpen ERA is pretty steep, the expected numbers are really sharp for this bullpen. So I actually like it going forward long-term, and we know the Mets bullpen. I, I mentioned Reed Garrett starting to give up the earned runs. He blew that game on uh, on Friday, and you know, it was you know pretty ugly one. So I got to go with the San Francisco Giants on the money line in this one. But like I said, a little bit hesitant. Next up, we see the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Chicago White Sox. Kyle Bradish and Garrett Crochet are your starters. You know, Garrett Crochet in the first few starts of the season, really strong, great strikeout numbers. Then he struggled against the Phillies, the Reds, and the Twins, giving up five, seven, and five earned runs in those games. And, but since then, he's pitched really well. I mean, two earned runs or fewer in every start since. Uh, in the month of May, he's got a .39 ERA in 23 innings, 27 strikeouts. The White Sox, they're 4-0 in those four games in May. But I will say, when you look at the strength of schedule in his starts in May, some pretty weak lineups against left-handed pitching. The Blue Jays, Nationals, Guardians, and Cardinals. The Guardians are a solid lineup against lefties, but the other teams, not so much. Uh, when you look at the Nationals, you know, near the bottom of the league, uh, the Blue Jays, same thing. St. Louis has been there pretty much all season against Southpaws. So, the Orioles now, they come into town. They're number one in OPS and isolated power against lefties in the month of May. They do have a pretty steep strikeout rate, which could benefit Crochet, who's a very strikeout, you know, heavy guy. But I still think the Orioles can get to him for a few runs. And with Bradish on the other side and the bullpen advantage that Baltimore has, I got to go with the Orioles in this game on the money line and run line on the road. Next up, we see the Texas Rangers taking on the Minnesota Twins. No official starter for the Rangers, but Pablo Lopez should be going for Minnesota. You know, not my favorite game on the board. We'll see who the Rangers go with as their starter. But the Rangers bullpen, if it's a bullpen game, it's got a 5.05 ERA in the season. One of the worst XFIPs in Sierras in the league as well in terms of that bullpen. So I don't love that Rangers bullpen. You know, And I think Pablo Lopez, while he struggled recently, is still going to end up being the much better option with the Twins bullpen to go with it. 
You know, Lopez, he's given up a lot of sharp contact recently. The seven earned runs and two home runs in that last game against Washington. But he's been a lot better at target field where he's got a 3.49 ERA. I think he bounces back here, and I think the Twins grab the W. So give me Minnesota in this one on the money line. Next up, we see the Philadelphia Phillies taking on the Colorado Rockies. Ranger Suarez and Cal Quantrill are your starters. Ranger Suarez could be the best pitcher in baseball right now. He's got a 9-0 record with a 1.36 ERA, a .79 whip, his best in baseball. The ERA is second best. He does a great job of keeping the ball on the ground right around a strikeout per inning. However, he's pitching at Coors Field in this game, and it's always different for starting pitchers. Now you have to go at Coors Field, where Suarez pitched last year and did not fare too well. He only went four innings in a start, and that was at the beginning of last year. Uh, four innings, seven base hits, and three earned runs. Now, the Phillies went on to win that game, but, you know, 72 pitches in four innings for Suarez. It was not his best outing, that's for sure. And, you know, the Rockies have been competitive at Coors Field this season, especially in their, you know, recent home games we saw at the beginning of the series. And Cal Quantrill has been very, very strong on the mound recently. And Cal Quantrill is not usually a guy that misses a lot of bats and earns a lot of strikeouts. He's had eight, five, five, and nine strikeouts his last four games. Really impressive stuff for Quantrill. He's pitching deep into games. He's given up two earned runs or fewer in each of his last four starts. So if he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Suarez, I think the value is certainly there at Colorado in this game. I'm going to go with the Rockies here, plus the one-and-a-half runs on the money line in this spot. Suarez has been excellent, but this is a tough spot at Coors Field. Next up, we see the Cleveland Guardians taking on the Los Angeles Angels. We're going to see Reed Detmers and Ben Lively as your starters. We know it's been tough for Reed Detmers recently. He's got that ERA now at 5.8 on the season and even steeper at Angel Stadium, 6.43. In his last five games, five or more runs given up, a lot of sharp contact home runs to go with it. And I just can't trust him in this game against the Guardians lineup that we talked about. has actually been pretty solid against lefties this year and in the month of May. In the month of May, they're number two in isolated power against lefties, number five in team OPS, a high walk rate to go with it. So they should be able to get to Reed Detmers early in this one. And this Angels bullpen, which, which we know has struggled this year, you know, pretty much all season. While Ben Lively on the other side, while he's got a 2.84 ERA, that ERA is above four on the road. And I do expect a lot of regression in this game going forward. The expected numbers, you know, all above a run higher than his current ERA, the XFIP at 4.07, the FIP at 4.13. So I think the Angels can get to him for a few runs as well. I like the over in this Guardians-Angels game. Next up, we see the Houston Astros taking on the Oakland Athletics. Ronald Blanco and Aaron Brooks are your starters. Pretty interesting game here. You know, Aaron Brooks, I, I don't love him in this spot. I really don't love him as a starting pitching option. I think the Astros can get to him. They, you know, they, they saw him not too long ago. They were able to get seven base hits and three earned runs off him in a 3 nothing Astros win. I think they can get to, you know, three or more runs as well in this game. And it might be enough for a win. The question is, though, it's, it's a little bit of uncertainty with this one. With Ronald Blanco returning from the suspension. We know he was ejected from that game against the Oakland A's back on May 14th. And he pitched well in that game. He's pitched well this season. He threw a no-hitter. But... You know, he, he got caught and he got ejected in that last game. So we'll have to see if he can bounce back from that and still pitch well. He's going to be certainly under a microscope in this one. And you know, I think the A's are probably going to be fired up to face him, you know, as they, you know, they that was the game that he, you know, he pitched against where he got ejected. So uh, it's going to be an interesting game. I'm going to lean towards the Astros. I think I still think Blanco will be good enough for the Astros to win and cover the run line. But uh, a game, you know, I'm, I'll be watching more so as a fan than anything else. Next up, we see the Miami Marlins taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Ryan Weathers and Brandon Fott are your starters. Two young starting pitchers that have had their struggles in the major leagues, that's for sure, but have pitched really well overall you know, recently. And I would say overall the season's been solid for both of these guys. Ryan Weathers, 3.49 ERA, 2.52 ERA on the road this year. Three earned runs or fewer in each of the last four starts. Strikeout numbers have been him all over the place, but he had eight Ks in that last game against the Brewers, seven innings of work. So he's in good form. We know Brandon Fott's in really good form, giving up three earned runs or fewer in each of his last five starts. The strikeout numbers have been there. He just faced the Dodgers of all teams and went six innings of two earned run baseball at seven strikeouts in a, a, a Diamondbacks win in that one, seven to three of finals. So I, I'm, I think we see a low scoring game here like we saw in the first game of this series. Give me the under in Miami, Arizona. Next up, the New York Yankees taking on the San Diego Padres. Clark Schmidt and Joe Musgrove are your starters. I got to go with the Yankees in this one. You know, Musgrove, his first start back from the injury, he pitched pretty well against Cincinnati. Three innings, one earned run, but he kind of labored through those innings, and he still gave up, you know, two total runs, a couple of walks, three base hits as well, and it was still as a Padres loss in the end, and the Yankees have just crushed right into pitching this season. So with Musgrove's struggles overall this year and ERA above six on the season, I just can't get there with San Diego. Clark Schmidt pitched really well recently, and I think he does enough here. You know, the Padres are a tough lineup against Friday, especially with Luis Arise at the top of that lineup, but I think the Yankees get the job done and grab the W. 
Next up, we see the final game for the Sunday card in Major League Baseball, the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals. No official starter for Chicago, but we should see Sonny Gray going for St. Louis. I like the form that Sonny Gray is in right now. His last game, he had five no-hit innings. Then a couple of errors kind of unraveled that start. He gave up a home run to Gunnar Henderson. And uh, the final line was five and two-thirds, one earned run on the home run with six strikeouts. He had a little bit of trouble after that home run as well. So uh, they were, you know, they had kind of had to take him out a little bit earlier. But he's pitched well. The Cardinals are four and one his last five starts. No official starters, what the way, you know, for Chicago's starting pitcher. But if it's a bullpen game, the Cubs bullpen's been okay this year, right around the middle of the pack in the league. But St. Louis, I think, has played a lot better baseball in the last couple of weeks. And I'm willing to take them at home in this one with grand amount. The price is probably not going to be the best, but I'm going to lean towards St. Louis on the money line. And that's it. Those are the games for Sunday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Manelli. Good luck.